Hi there, and welcome to the ATS Podcast with me, Will Brown, and John Soulsby, where we break down chunks of health and fitness information into bite-sized pieces, remove a bunch of the noise, and just leave what's relevant. Uh, today, on Season 2, Episode 44, uh, we are talking about mastering mindfulness and mental training for athletes. Yeah. Uh, I think we've discussed this... Um quite a bit like your general we did a whole series um with Zoe. The about, God for Zoe. Yeah. About um uh, mindfulness and kind of how then the impacts you can have on your general training. Uh, and it's becoming like an absolutely huge part of pretty much anything competitive. Mm. Like it, I, I don't know if you've had the same discussion with your clients, but like the fact that, like, video game teams, like esports teams, ha- usually have a sports psychologist now, blows their mind. Yeah, that that oh, that almost makes more sense because in a lot of yeah. sports there is, I mean, there's always a psychological element. I think you can't. That's something a lot of even just working as a PT, but even with a lot of everyday non-athlete like non-competitive clients psychology hits physiology pretty quickly depending on the kind of person Mm -hmm. and you can't really separate them ever uh the the type a people try but then they end up completely permanently perplexed as to like why their absolutely perfect nutrition is getting derailed and they don't understand why like they they know they they know how not to and they've done everything textbook up until this point but they still can't quite understand why they still want a biscuit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like they yeah. just don't get it. They're like, "But I should like but, I'm but not I going do. to." Like, yeah, but it's like, "But I want one." They're like, "Oh yes, mate." That's what did I say. I said something fucking stupid the other day. Um, because uh, we were I was talking about this with someone, but thoughts, yeah, thoughts and feelings are are two two different things. Like, uh, what did I say? I said they're like numbers and smells. Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> like they're very, they're very different concepts, and they're very separate. But they often get like, like people try it. They they assume everything can be a thought, and you're like, no, it's not. Like feel, feelings are not thoughts. They are they are a, di- a different thing. And yeah. that has to, like, in a kind of athletic context, that can be, could probably kind of manifest as things like knowing. Like being a seasoned competitor and still getting extremely anxious to the point of it being a detriment, even though you know you like you've been there before, you've done it loads, yeah, but without any specific attention paid to how to manage your uh competitive arousal uh you're gonna struggle. <laughs> I know competitive arousal is a, a double word that definitely definitely needs put on something. Uh huh. The uh, I was, no. I, was, I was talking to somebody about this as well because it was like uh, something that you'll see, and if again after you hear this, you might look at it and find it everywhere. Is that something a lot of professional athletes will do in high pressure situations? Is a very deliberate exhale, and the exhale is meant to engage your parasympathetic nervous system and help calm you down and get you out of the old fight or flight. I was like, yeah, you don't really see anyone like lining up for a putt on the Masters, getting absolutely hyped out of their mind, like, listening to Disturbed. Like, it doesn't really happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't really happen. You never see, like, someone trying to place kick, like, penalty kick for the win in, like, a Rugby World Cup final or something, getting absolutely hyped. You usually see them, like, kind of settle themselves, put a very yeah. deliberate exhale out there, and then go and do their thing. Yeah. Which, again, speaks to volumes to the fact that you can definitely be too hyped. Totally agree. Technique usually goes out the window when you get too high. Agree. Yeah, it's just in a in a lot of output sports, people tend to think you could just hype hype through problems. I'm like, no. <laughs> well, very... that's because it's techniques are crutch for the weak in parallel thing. So <laughs> that you, is true. Yeah. yeah. Technique the is more a hype you the, get, technique is a crutch for the talentless. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think that's like a very. People just think you need to get essentially more and more hype, and that will push your way through everything. Yeah, actually... you won't. Your 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 biology will carry you a lot past your brain. You don't. Yeah. You, it doesn't need your brain's help. Like 
if your training is right, your your brain just gets in the way mostly. Hen hence, I keep telling people to stop thinking, like return to monkey, like yeah. <laughs> return to being a chimp, like less less think, only vibes. <laughs> it's a much better way to to carry through. But um, oh, what was some of the some of the stuff, the other kind of things we've talk talked about? The there's a very good book of um how you can look to integrate a periodized approach for training nutrition and sports psychology like uh by Tudor Bompa James Hoffman and the nutritionist is the guy I can always never remember but it's a pretty cool uh book it's pretty revolutionary for like the way I approached kind of stuff with regards to training people is that like you you can actually develop like a kind of trifecta approach where you work on uh, kind of the mental side of training and competing year round not just like pre-competition just like you work on everything else like obviously it's kind yeah. of context specific like even if you're quite far away from your specific competitive event or your specific goal you're still working towards it you're just doing a more varied less specific approach but you should probably still be doing something that will eventually help if your plan is well organized. But yeah, which makes sense because there's not many other things you would just start doing at the last minute. Yeah, I think that is something people get. This is the problem of trying to Google James Hoffman's books is that coffee dude with the, the gray hair is also called yeah. James Hoffman and he has a bajillion books about coffee and coffee is way more popular than very As I say, and probably far more followers. <laughs> Sorry, Hop James Hoffman, sports physiologist or whatever. Uh, yes, it's called uh, it's called Integrated Periodization in Sports Training and Athletic Development uh, by yeah. Boris Blumenstein. That's the guy, Tudor Bompa and James Hoffman. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Highly advise. Um, yeah, mastering mindfulness, mental training for athletes. Uh, something you can do all year round. It's free. Yeah. You don't need to go outside. You can do it in the nice cozy cozy home. Like. Don't need to get wet. Don't need to get cold. I think um, the one of the big parts as well that's already talked about as well. It's taking. It's like it goes back to the thoughts and feelings of um, kind of the difference between like you thinking, uh, like she used the example. I'm pretty sure of it raining, and most people then have the feeling of the day's going to be shit because it's raining, mm -hmm. and then trying to separate into just the fact that it's raining. Does that really have any impact? on what you're getting up yeah and even then and, can you wear an anorak <laughs> yeah and then that comes to training of you might have what you perceive to be a bad training session but actually at the end of the day you maybe didn't hit what you thought you were but it's probably still a very good training session yeah the um oh that was a quote about like i remember reading something about expectation like removing expectation also kind of removes disappointment because disappointment yeah. is typically from where expectation fails to meet reality or whatever it is like the the even just net neutral in terms of the process is usually quite good in that if you're like i slept like shit training is going to be what it's going to be versus i slept like shit training's going to be shit like before you've yeah. even got there you're already kind of manifesting a bad time whereas if you're just like i didn't sleep too good i'm gonna try my best and train anyway and then if yeah. training is kind of crap, you're like, well, we know why it's crap, because I barely slept. Duh. Mm -hmm. Totally fine. Chalk that one up. Or if you're like, that actually went fine. You're like, okay, cool. Like Training went fine in spite of the fact we barely slept. Yeah. Probably want to try catch up on that sleep, though. But like, if you just if you self-fulfill right out the gate, like you're just going to have a bad time. Yeah. But yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other things I want to touch on. Like the... That thoughts and feelings thing is uh, diffusion in ACT in the old uh, acceptance commitment training stuff that yeah. uh, big Zoe is a big uh, proponent of, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, process orientation, thought diffusion, all that kind of shit. Very good things to Google. Um, is there anything else we want to cover? No, I mean, I think that's pretty much the main mm, big one talking point. So I'll probably get most people most of the way. Awesome. Guys, catch you next time. <laughs>